today I'll be diving into the nitty gritty of reaching out to professors for both masters and PhD positions in order for you to secure a fully funded scholarship of course you know that in Canada most opportunities for research masters PhD funded scholarship is you know dependent on you getting a supervisor in a program that uh, that actually requires a professor before admission okay I mean there are some a lot of other programs that are research programs that don't really require you to get a professor before you apply but it's a research program they're just going to say you apply when you apply probably in the first semester we're going to find a supervisor for you so you apply directly just know that programs like that they are actually more competitive because there are a lot of students applying and as such the gpa requirement is usually higher actually one that is less competitive is actually the one that requires you to get a supervisor before you apply the beauty about this is that when you are able to secure a supervisor you are not going to be competing with anybody for admission so how exactly does it work because when you apply and a supervisor says i'm going to accept you what the school actually is going to do is to compare look at the profile your credentials and see if you meet the admission requirement for that particular um university that is all you're not competing with anybody okay but of course before you can get a supervisor there is a lot of work that is going to be done so in this video i will give about five points that will help you to secure a supervisor within the shortest possible time trust me this process work these points are valid and they have been proven over and over again to work let's look at the five key things to do before reaching out to professors are you ready let's look at number one very important research the professor and their interest you know first and foremost you really need to dive deep into the professor's background and also their research don't just skim through their web page you know take out the time to read through their recent publication and really get a good grasp of their expertise okay you need to understand the key concepts you know the methodology that they are doing and also what is the impact of their work now this will not only help you to tell your email to show genuine interest in that professor what it also do is that it enables you to ask informed question and also highlight you know any kind of specific areas that will be of interest and that also resonate with you if you don't do that the professors are just going to say oh this person is not serious they've not taken out the time to know exactly what we are doing now I'm going to be going to PubMed because sometimes I know a lot of people have reached out to me and say, how do I even get these professors? And also, how do I even get the recent research area? Because some of them don't update their website. So I'm going to PubMed now and quickly show you briefly. Showing you quickly how you'll be able to get the recent area, recent research area of these professors before sending an email to them. Let's go to University of Alberta as an example and i'm just going to be using you know uh, any kind any college you can let me use uh, agricultural life and environmental science as an example when you click on that and then you're going to select you know there is a college of natural and applied science these are some of the departments that are in that or faculties right that's some of the faculties that are in those areas so if you click on the engineering, you're going to see all kinds of engineering related area, medicine, pharmacy. Let's click on agricultural food and nutritional science. I'm going to click here. I'm interested in this department. Maybe you want you are interested in, you know, uh, they have a um, graduate program in animal science, human nutrition, food science and bio resource technology, plant biosystem. And they're kind of thinking how do i really get to see uh some of these professors you know it's a very easy thing um you can search by graduate to go go to graduate and undergraduate you're going to look at for in if you want to do animal science you know um food science or like i mentioned before let's say i'm interested in human nutrition and there's something that says research team i'm going to click on research team and see what are, who are some of the professors that are involved or that, that are in this area okay so if you just scroll down you are going to see okay 
those that work, work on new, uh, those that work on nutrient requirements, you know, Rhonda Bell, Catherine Chan, you know, um, Catherine Field, you know, um, and then those that work on nutritional disease, you're going to see all of their names. Those that work on community and community nutrition dietetics depends on what you're what you're looking at for and then this particular website they've actually done a very good job to do a lot of videos to see exactly what some of these professors are actually doing so you can click on any of them and see what exactly they are doing and if you want to learn more about them let's say let's click click on um uh, this professor Catherine fit for example if you want to contact her you know it's very easy her email address is here, phone number, but I would advise do not go, please. You know, you can send them an email, right? And then you can learn more about the research that they do. This is a summary of the research area of the professor. And then these are some of the courses that they do. And then these are some publications, but this is 2020, 2019, 2019, 2019, and 2018. Sometimes you might be wondering, how do I get the recent area of this professor what you're going to do uh just type in you know copy this name here and go to a website called pubmed uh pubmed okay so when this is actually a more like a research database um for a lot of the papers that are published especially in the science related area and you are going to put uh paste the name here and then search okay now it's going to give you a lot of options and one of the things you you have to click on this display and then click on most so you have to click on this display and then click on most recent okay now you can see something relating to uh 2000 now it's, let me just try to zoom in now you can see 2013 now one thing you always want to do is to make sure that the name of the professor that you want to contact is in the last name for example this richard c may also be a professor but she is not a corresponding author so you okay let, let me just give an example for example you can see this particular research paper this particular name is not in the last particular it, it's not in the last name so it means that it is not you know here she is not a here she is not the corresponding author okay uh and then you can use something like this you know so what i would not advise you to do is to look at some of this research area if you're interested in this area or this area or this area that are all 2023 you know or um this area you can you can you know learn more then you want to click on this and one of the things you always want to do is to always confirm their affiliation okay if i expand this you are seeing a number two here so you see here to say department of agricultural food and nutritional sciences so it means that they are actually in that department then you can read through this paper you know look at the conclusions and then you can write something based on that so that is actually how you can get to know the recent research area of the professor second thing that is very important is that you have to review the program requirements for example if a program that does not require to get a supervisor and you are sending email to a professor that you need a supervisor you need a supervisor that is already a red flag that you've not taken the time to read through the research, sorry, uh, the requirement for the program. So it's really on the, uh, very important to understand the requirement and the application process of the MSc and the PhD program, okay, that you're interested in. So you have to thoroughly, you see why I used to help tell people, don't just say somebody's going to do this thing for me. There's a lot of work that you have to put in, you know, it, it's very tough and challenging. So you have to take your time, read through all the program website, the admission guideline, their specific instruction, read through it, re take notes of all the requirements, the prerequisite, the qualification, the deadline for admission, because some programs will require you to have some prerequisite courses, some required test course, just so, so you make sure you meet this requires, requirement before even contacting the professor. So if you really understand the program requirement, you can really demonstrate how your background and qualification actually aligns with their expectation very important now comes the third option which is 
preparing a well-crafted email. Now, let's talk about how to really compose a very compelling email. Like I said, this professor received tons of emails, so yours really need to stand out to them. One of the first thing you want to do in your email is to really begin with a very good professional and concise subject line that actually demonstrates the purpose of that email. For example, you can say prospective MSc student inquiry or prospective PhD student inquiry. You have to address the professor by their name, you know, by their title or name, usually maybe doctor and then their first name. Usually doctor and their first name, you know. So in the email introduction, whether they are, before I talk about the introduction, in the um, greeting, whether they are assistant professor, uh, you know, associate professor, you can just say dear doctor, that's fine, okay? Now, in the email introduction, what, what do you want to do? Introduce yourself briefly, mention your academic background, and also express your interest in the program. You have to really show that you have done a lot of homework in you know you have to reference specific paper maybe the projects you know any kind of ideas from their lab that actually intrigue you okay then you move further in the email to explain how your research interest aligns with theirs and why do you really believe that their lab or their research group is going to be the perfect fit for you and you have to really make sure you highlight any relevant research experience, any coursework, any skills that actually makes you a very strong candidate. And at the end of the email, close the email by really expressing your enthusiasm to discuss any other for to discuss further or to inquire about any other potential research activities or opportunities. The fourth option or the fourth point or key is really developing a very strong academic and academic CV and maybe statement of purpose may be required, okay? Curriculum vitae, your CV and statement of purpose are really crucial components of this application purpose. So, I mean, sometimes if they don't require to send a separate SOP, that's fine. You can just put it in the email and that's okay for them. Let's talk about CV. So, the CV should really highlight your academic achievement, your research experience, your relevant coursework, your publication, any conference presentation, and any awards or honors that you receive. Now, this is not a resume for job application, so think about it, they are quite different. For job application, perfect, but for this academic CV, talk about your thesis title because now you really try to appease the professor that you really know what you're doing. You have to tailor your CV to emphasize the experience that actually align with the professor's research and the program that you're applying to. The last but not the least is really take your time to proofread and seek feedback. Very important. Now, I will say the importance of proofreading cannot be overemphasized because if you already send an email to a professor and the English, you don't even care about English, you're sending any kind of email, the form you think the professors are going to think that this person actually have a very terrible grammar. So writing is going to be a problem, right? So take your time, read the email again and again, look at your CV again and again for any kind of grammatical errors. You can use Grammarly, right? Any typos, any formatting issue, read them out aloud to yourself so that you can catch any kind of awkward phrases or any kind of inconsistencies, right? So it's also important you can ask people to review, to check any advice, so if you trust people that you trust, your friends to really read through, just even though they are not expert at this, they should be able to catch any grammatical, you know, uh, uh, um, badly constructed grammar so that they can help you make sure that you send an error-free uh, message to the professor and also your CV as well. Sit feedback, right? The coherence, is it clear, right? Does it really demonstrate exactly what you are trying to uh, portray? Okay, and think about if you are the professor and someone sends this kind of email to you, are you going to consider taking that person in your lab? That's one of the questions you have to ask yourself. So really take that feedback into consideration, make the necessary revisions, and you have to remember that the more eyes that can help you to look through your application material, the better the chances of catching any kind of overlooked mistakes or areas that actually need improvement. So. If you really follow up these steps, you will be very much prepared to send your emails to professors for master's or for PhD position. We have it, the five essential things that you should do before sending emails to professors for master's and PhD position. Remember, 
putting in this effort to thoroughly research the professor, their work, you know, and also reviewing the program requirement, crafting that compelling email, and also developing strong application materials and seeking feedback will significantly improve your chances of getting success. So throughout the whole process. And I mean, if you are looking for, maybe you've been trying, it's not working, reach out to me, there's throughout the whole process. And I mean, if you are looking for, maybe you've been trying, it's not working, reach out to me. There's going to be a link in the description. I can help you look through your email, see what you've sent in the past, your CV, and then I can offer you one or two suggestions on how to get it better. So that's going to be the end for this video. If you found this content useful, why don't you consider smash, smash, smash that like button and leave a comment in the comment section. It's going to help YouTube algorithm recommend this video to other people. Once again, if you haven't subscribed, do it to subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.